Welcome. Thanks so much, John. We'd like to welcome everyone to our funding budget savings solutions here for FY21 today. Thanks so much for joining. We're so excited about the opportunity here to co-present and have co-hosts of our webinar today uh, with Chris and uh, Dallas from CRI Advantage. So I think we'll be able to provide you with some great insights on how customers have been able to uh, really find those budget saving opportunities so they can invest uh, and uh, conquer some of their current challenges as well as their strategic objectives uh, for the year. First, just wanted to give everyone a brief uh, overview of our agenda. I have a chance to, for Chris and for Dallas to provide a brief introduction here in just a minute. But our focus today is really identifying some where we kind of see very tangible opportunities for customers to uh, find uh, budget savings so they can invest in their strategic initiatives or also invest in some of those new imperatives they have based upon uh, the uh, turbulent marketplace. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to walk through three different uh, areas here within ServiceNow. So around customer service and customer uh, engagement, talking about human resource and employee uh, service delivery, application portfolio management, software asset management, as well as uh, strategic project and portfolio management. So that's going to be our focus here is to walk through those items. Uh, and then based on time, we'll have a, a chance to have a roundtable discussion. So first, uh, Chris, want to turn it over to you briefly if you'd like to do a brief introduction, and then we can follow it up by Dallas. So, uh, Chris, I'll turn it over to you. Um, I'm Christopher Clunch. I'm the Vice President of Sales and uh, Marketing or the Solutions Division over at CRI in Boise, Idaho. Uh, we've been a family-run business for over 30 years. We also have offices in Idaho Falls, Idaho, Santa Fe, New Mexico, uh, rest in Virginia, out in the D.C. area. We do a lot of work with large um, federal government agencies all the way down to the really the smallest of uh, um, commercial businesses. And um, Dallas, did you want to introduce yourself? Sure. So I'm Dallas Blatt and I handle operations for CRI Advantage over here in the solutions division. Uh, we focus mainly on providing uh, now applications, services, and support to different clients in a sled and commercial industry. Um, you know, we have the the wonderful uh, ability to be able to work with Service now and deal with it on a daily basis. Uh, and one of the things that you know I think is really important is for us to know that. How robust the platform actually is. I mean, if, if you have a problem, uh, ServiceNow can pretty much solve it from what we've encountered. Thanks. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Chris and Dallas. We appreciate the uh, the joint sponsorship here and co-host for our webinar today. Uh, just a brief uh, background of myself. I spent many years doing uh, IT transformation uh, work with Accenture and with uh, Results Positive. Here we're focused on uh, helping customers uh, really. Uh, drive value as well as uh, be able to optimize the results for their technology investments, uh, whether that be uh, servicing the business units or whether that be serving uh, the IT department. So thanks again for uh, joining our session today. Uh, so as we know, uh, in, in today's world, there's a lot of unplanned uh, activities and events. And so we know that's causing constraints on uh, budgets. Uh, and so uh, there's uh, unplanned uh, budgets that we need to focus on. Uh, in these times, because maybe we need to shift the organization to more uh, on time or excuse me, online delivery versus, uh, you know, uh, on site, uh, you know, actual uh, dining, if you will. Or we need to shift from uh, in classroom uh, to actual to uh, online delivery. So many different uh, challenges here and it's requiring organizations to invest in, in unplanned activities. And so we wanted to put together the webinar here to kind of give an example of where customers have been able to find budget savings by using various solutions so they can free up those funds to address uh, some of these challenges. So we know there's been many uh, unplanned events. Uh, I think last year we definitely would, didn't plan on a, a global pandemic. And this year we probably didn't plan on it continuing. Um, we've seen that whole need for digital transformation in the past. We've now seen that as a digital imperative. How do we actually uh, digitize our overall organization and our go-to-market uh, solutions and the way we interact with our customers and the way that we deliver services? 
Uh, we've also seen just in, say, in the healthcare area, uh, many different types of uh, initiatives here uh, to drive and to uh, focus on solving the uh, actual uh, outbreak. Uh, this all led to these budget worries and constraints, and so hence the reason we're here on our uh, webinar today. So I appreciate you attending, and we're assuming that you have some of these uh, issues that you're dealing with today, some of these uh, shift uh, in direction in your organization, and I'm looking for ways to fund those, uh, looking for ways uh, to address those uh, concerns. In terms of a brief introduction, those of you that, that might not know too much about ServiceNow, as Dallas mentioned, it's a, a great end-to-end -end platform that can address and solve uh, your business uh, needs uh, and your business challenges. And so from a ServiceNow perspective, uh, even from their CEO, uh, the whole idea is uh, focusing on driving great workflow for an organization. Um, so if we have that right experience, we're going to be able to deliver those products and services or be able to support those products and services in terms of internal uh, workflows and be able to kind of sort that in to end workflow for an organization. As this platform is very uh, expansive, uh, so you can uh, support uh, the customer uh, service, as an example, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about that as we go through. We can support all the employee events and employee management activities, onboarding, as an example, end-to-end uh, -end IT, as you'd expect. And there's more and more solutions, such as managing the, the, uh, the legal department. Um, so there's an extensive set of uh, solutions that are coming online uh, every day that ServiceNow has to offer. In addition to that, uh, there's the app development platform, uh, so you can actually kind of build your own solutions, take any of your uh, custom workflows, you can digitize those and uh, enable those on the platform, as well as then you can tie into some of your data sources that you might uh, be using uh, as well. And so it's a very robust uh, integration uh, capabilities. We've seen it as one of the simplest ways to integrate uh, with enterprise uh, solutions. So the, the good news is you have an opportunity here for one platform to really drive and solve uh, specific customer uh, needs uh, and challenges. So definitely the power of the workflow and power of a great experience. So what do we want to jump into first? Uh, here's a focus on, for our webinar today around where can we save uh, money for organizations? Where are some of the tangible areas uh, to uh, identify uh, savings so you can shift those funds to uh, more strategic initiatives. So if you look at it from a customer service perspective and from a ServiceNow perspective, it's all about that service management function. Uh, you already probably have some mechanism for your customers to interact with the organization, but do you have an effective way to provide that end-to-end -end customer service across the different internal departments uh, and be able to uh, provide that customer experience ultimately so you can increase that customer loyalty. So we found kind of three key areas. There's many other areas, but three key areas were to look for uh, some great budget funding uh, opportunities. So if we look at it from uh, reducing your overall customer service agent costs, so the ability to uh, utilize virtual agent, we're seeing that happen more and more, especially uh, with the pandemic, uh, whether it be, uh, you know, just your whole idea of IT uh, service desk, or whether it be here from a customer perspective, we're seeing that more and more on just uh, general uh, websites. Uh, so that capability is available here with ServiceNow that you can have that virtual agent. You can uh, set that up to answer a series of questions that can automate a workflow associated with that. So the whole idea here is uh, by being able to have a great way to engage with customers via a virtual agent, that way we don't need as many uh, physical agents to uh, support our customers, thereby we can redeploy them to focus more on uh, customer service, uh, have them focus more on uh, building uh, new products and services. So a great area here to look for uh, cost savings. Next, when we look at that actual customer service uh, function and being able to provide that across uh, the different silos or different departments, uh, using the capabilities around predictive intelligence, uh, the automated workflow, being able to understand the, the current trends of your customers and looking at uh, those resolution analytics can really streamline the efficiencies. That way you can respond quicker uh, to the customer. A request comes in, 
uh, we can understand how that's typically been resolved uh, and immediately give that resolution versus having to put the customer on hold and do some research as we might have experienced in some of our personal uh, experiences with other organizations. So For increasing sure. that efficiency is going to definitely drive uh, and improve that uh, interaction. And then ultimately then that's gonna lead to the third option here is around uh, the ability to increase loyalty. As we've increased this customer experience uh, by these first two items, then we have a, a chance to actually increase revenue. So we see that as another area to drive uh, funding opportunities through increased revenue. We're going to have more funding uh, to focus on more strategic initiatives and go out and implement the next virtual agent uh, type of capability uh, as an example. So that's kind of some what we see tangible areas here from a customer uh, service perspective. And next here, we can kind of see some examples of outcomes of customers here using the ServiceNow solution. Uh, and so we can see some, uh, some very significant uh, savings here. Um, so when you look at it from a, an efficiency perspective, being able to quickly uh, be provide the agents with the uh, resolution, we can reduce the time it takes to handle a case. Uh, you can see here by uh, being able to simplify that and reduce that handling time, you can result in significant savings. We can shift those resources to work on other uh, more important strategic items. We can see here on the right hand side, uh, looking at uh, reducing in the case volume and the associated cost, uh, reducing in the time to actually track and monitor uh, the cases, uh, and then being able to have significant uh, savings here just from a reporting and tracking perspective. So uh, having this end-to-end -end, uh, case management capability, the automated workflows, as well as in the predictive uh, intelligence and analytics, uh, definitely has some tangible uh, benefits that you might be able to accomplish in your organization as well. And next, uh, if we look at it from an, an overall customer uh, loyalty perspective, but as we all know, if we increase that customer experience, that customer satisfaction, they want to come back, they want to inquire about additional products and services we have to offer, or even that experience uh, when a customer calls in for service. Now we don't need to spend all the time trying to uh, solve their problem. We've got that information being presented to us immediately. Then we can have a conversation about uh, how they could uh, get additional value uh, through some of their additional products and service. So allowing those customer service agents some opportunities for upsell opportunities, here again, uh, to drive that loyalty as well as to drive uh, overall increases in revenue. So very uh, tangible examples here of looking at uh, driving revenue or just uh, even retaining a revenue. We know that there's a lot of uh, customer churn. So as you can see here from a customer retention perspective, uh, a very nice example of uh, what's possible here around uh, customer engagement and customer loyalty. Uh, so that's kind of a summary of the different examples that we've seen here of driving uh, benefits here from a customer perspective. Uh, Chris, I just want to reach out there if there's anything you wanted to, to mention that you've seen uh, customers being able to achieve when it comes to customer service management. Uh, yeah, thanks, John. Um, uh, for example, um, we have a, a, a couple of clients that we've worked with where we've utilized service management, whether customer service management or internal service management, in both cases to drive tremendous efficiency and enable our clients to automate these things that they often talked about automating or uh, uh, automated to a particular degree, but hadn't gone the, the, the full mile. And so we were able to take, as you mentioned, at the end of the different parts of the platform, the, the app engine and create really powerful workflows that enabled our clients to take literally handwritten forms and make those an online form and then become proactive and allow customers to fill those online forms out in advance and then tie it into things like the delivery of the mechanisms that the customers were requesting, all of the reporting, all of the back end inventory that came in uh, to be distributed. Um, we've been doing work with things like food banks. Um, we've, we've worked, um, and Dallas may able, be able to speak to this a little more, but agriculture, 
businesses that um, have an integration between um, both like vaccination tracking um, and uh, also um, veterinarian recording um, in an online environment, which was typically done on yellow pads in the field and then input when they got back to the to the um, environment. And then finally, what we found is people are accustomed to self-service today. Many of the customers that we reach out to want to be able to do their own password reset, want to be able to resolve an issue in the omni-channel, starting with their ability to fill out something in a digital workflow that gets passed through, receive updates via text or email, and then at the time of rev uh, resolution, be able to close that out. It took a, a while for people to become accustomed to that, but we're finding more and more of the customer base wanting to slide and click, utilize a mobile application, utilize it on their iPad. And uh, in doing that, customers receiving tremendous um, return on investment and um, budget savings. Um, Dallas, did you have anything to add on uh, examples around the customer service environment? Um, just basically that we were able to, you know, kind of flesh out some manual processes that were being accomplished to be for organizations that were supporting different clients, different customers. And, you know, we took a manual form in the specific example that you were talking about and, you know, made it digital. What does that do for, you know, the client that we were actually working with and the customers? I mean, it, it automates something. It takes away that manual process. It takes away volunteers and employees from having to sit there and manually record the information that's there. It, it, it digitizes and modernizes the process that exists within, you know, a, an organization. And the, the same thing, I mean, from customer service management, uh, you know, the application itself is so large and robust again, that sometimes it doesn't make sense to use CSM directly. But within our specific examples, we used App Engine to create an environment that did capture and replicate what CSM had accomplished or was intended to accomplish on a smaller scale, just allowing the clients to be able to, you know, still deal with their customers and accomplish the tasks that they had at hand. And, you know, obviously by automating it, it saved them, you know, money because people doing manual tasks, obviously is time and time is money in these situations so by automating something and making it so much more simplistic and making the kind of putting it in the realm of the the customer to do it before coming into the agency it has dramatically increased the efficiency for these organizations and um, if i just might wrap that up by saying when they took those handwritten forms into the back office a human input that information into another manual process, which was a spreadsheet. And not only is that extremely time consuming, but the, the probability of error at that point um, is, is greatly increased. So by implementing CSM or ITSM, or even using that low code, no code environment in the app engine to do custom workflows, the, um, the, the realization of benefit from not having those errors through input and the back office saving was absolutely significant. So, yeah, thanks so much, Chris and Dallas. Really do appreciate that. As you've mentioned, uh, we've seen similar uh, outcomes uh, and results for organizations. So, we appreciate that. We're going to move on to the next topic here, the next area uh, looking for uh, budget saving opportunities. So here from a resource management perspective and managing your employees and resources, uh, there's some significant opportunities here as well. Some of these are similar uh, as you would look at them from a customer perspective, because obviously an employee is more of an internal uh, customer. So there's definitely an opportunity to uh, reduce uh, your support costs. Uh, so for the size of your human resources team, right? The, as uh, Chris mentioned, not only do customers looking for different ways to engage, uh, so do employees. We all know that we all uh, in our own personal lives uh, use our phones and we use uh, the, the internet, we use uh, even uh, YouTube and other things to get answers to our questions. 
And so employees want the same type of engagement model. How can I quickly get access uh, so that I can help myself? How do I quickly search uh, what others have done and get answers to uh, resource policies? Um, so uh, being able to uh, provide those type of capabilities is going to enhance that employee engagement and overall loyalty. Um, so that's going to really help out and it's going to streamline the activities. It's that way um, the human resources team is not going to be bogged down with those type of information uh, requests because that information is just going to be supplied uh, via that mobile app, via that uh, self-service uh, employee portal. Additionally, uh, start applying the virtual agent. Uh, we all uh, use a virtual agent from time to time when we're looking at products and services for uh, at home and for our families. Well, now we could do the same thing uh, here with uh, human resources and we could ask questions and they could give us responses uh, there. Uh, and that can be driven by the virtual agent capabilities or uh, by various uh, predictive intelligence and analytics. Then when we look at it from an overall workflow perspective, reduce the onboarding and offboarding costs, uh, reduce the, the manual handoffs between different departments uh, by having that end-to-end uh, -end workflow uh, automation. So using that uh, enterprise service management capabilities to uh, provide uh, that type of end-to-end uh, -end, uh, solution. So very tangible examples here from a human resource perspective is kind of taking that uh, service management function to external customers, now uh, doing that here to uh, internal uh, employees or associates. Um, also, right, you could then translate this into an organization that are big into managing uh, constituents or uh, into managing uh, partners. And they could apply that same type of service management capabilities and solutions uh, to those different, uh, different groups. Next here, just to kind of highlight a couple examples uh, of savings and benefits we've uh, seen with uh, many organizations. So from a, a global financial services organization, uh, being able to save 600,000 on an annual basis, uh, re reducing and eliminating onboarding issues, uh, having that automated workflow, uh, not having those manual handoffs and that uh, dual uh, data entry uh, to significantly uh, reduce and streamline the processes. And reducing uh, these uh, separate manual disjointed processes into one end-to-end -end, uh, workflow. So key uh, opportunities here to drive savings, say for the human resources department. Here's another example here from a technology manufacturer. Uh, you know, we talk about having that one unified omni-channel experience uh, for customers. Now we've got an opportunity to provide that to our employees. How do we look at increasing the resolution rate on virtual agent or on chat uh, versus having to have that face-to-face -face discussion? We can see here uh, that's the way employees are looking to engage. They can quickly ask questions. They can quickly get answers. They don't need to get on the phone, wait for someone to be in the queue to be ready. Uh, they can get quick answers to the questions, driving up their satisfaction, also improving their productivity to deliver on uh, their uh, job and responsibilities uh, for the organization. Next, I wanted to jump into uh, application portfolio management. So this is an area where there's significant tangible uh, benefits, uh, and I'm going to highlight that here as we go through, uh, and we'll have a chance to hear a little bit from uh, Chris and Dallas on this as well. The nice thing, first of all, with application portfolio management is you're really trying to manage your, your portfolio of applications, and you can do that both strategically as well as operationally. So strategically, what applications and capabilities do we need to have in our organization to support uh, the new way of doing business digitally, right? Do we Can we support online learning? Can we support uh, online ordering of uh, products and services? Um, if we don't have that capability today, we need to go and invest in those new applications. At the same time, we might need to start sunsetting some old applications. So when you think about being able to, say, sunset some of those applications and retire and rationalize, there's some significant savings because we'll save the, the software costs associated with the applications. We'll save the infrastructure costs associated with that. All those items are typically then managed on the CMDB so we can get that uh, visibility. So one key area here for driving saving is retiring uh, and rationalizing duplicate applications. 
when we go in and help organizations around app portfolio management, we find many times that we have similar applications that do the same function, but they're they're being used uh, throughout the organization by different departments. So one department is using product A to do the same function that uh, another business unit is using, but they're using product C. And so there's a duplicate applications and opportunity to rationalize and centralize on one uh, application. That's definitely in a, what we see a lot of times with customers uh, purchasing and investing in service now. They're able to uh, rationalize and get on one centralized platform as well as are able to start digitizing uh, all their manual uh, processes today. So the next uh, item here is removing uh, the supporting infrastructure or software related to uh, applications that you're going to uh, rationalize in your organization. So very tangible dollars. We've seen organizations, you know, save, you know, millions of dollars in a matter of weeks uh, by getting that visibility either through uh, discovery uh, or uh, just through uh, analyzing uh, which applications are truly needed uh, and being able to then uh, retire unneeded applications. Additionally, there's an opportunity here around reducing your overall uh, total cost of ownership. So ServiceNow can provide you out of the box views into your total cost of ownership. And when you think about it, a lot of times organizations that are looking at app portfolio management, they have a struggle in looking at that total cost because of, they have one solution that's kind of strategically looking at their applications. They have another solution that's managing uh, the tickets and everything to support those applications. Uh, and so they might be adding uh, another solution to manage all the projects for enhancements and, and uh, application rollout. Well, those are all three disparate systems. And then they have another system to look at the cost uh, of those uh, components. Well, in ServiceNow, that's all in one solution. And so you can leverage what you're already using around your ticketing uh, within ServiceNow or what you're already using around managing your projects. Uh, so you can have that all on the single platform and get that full visibility. So you understand what you're investing in and you can then uh, be able to make decisions to reduce that uh, total cost of ownership. So a couple of examples here. Um, significant savings here from an aerospace and manufacturer looking for ways to reduce uh, redundant tasks here. You can see here millions of dollars, $7 million savings here in terms of uh, reducing uh, applications. So having that strategic focus on uh, rationalization and coming down to, to you know, uh, single platforms to manage multiple functions in the organization. Um, so significant savings here uh, that we see. And next year, looking at uh, another organization here, an energy company. And first, they're able to reduce the number of uh, on-premise uh, applications, uh, software contracts, really quick, easy, quick time to value uh, budget savings. So if we can identify those, we can immediately save those costs or not spend that those funds this year and focus on that new digital transformation so that we can uh, be able to deliver our products and services digitally. So key uh, area here uh, in terms of uh, an example of driving savings. Uh, next, next here is uh, looking for the ability to kind of simplify and understand how they can leverage the CMDB, um, which is the foundation layer here in managing your application portfolio. And then they were using it also uh, to track and manage uh, their project proposals and projects. So they're able to understand the demand coming in to support their projects and what those investment initiatives were about. That way they could uh, knowingly make decisions to continue to invest in certain uh, applications or decide to, hey, we need to stop investing since that's not really on our strategic roadmap going forward. So significant benefits here uh, from an application portfolio management perspective. Chris, I'd just like to give you a couple minutes here. We don't have a lot of time uh, with our session today and a few more areas to get into, but uh, just wonder if you could give us a few examples on how the, the CMDB and how you guys have been able to uh, really drive some savings for organizations by getting that visibility in through discovery or the CMDB. Sure, John, thanks. Um, one of the things that we've seen are the implications of taking things like um, uh, either infrastructure, hardware, uh, CIs, uh, business services, business processes, and 
software and or application management and utilizing the CMDB as a powerful dynamic tool to make decisions about all of the things that you just spoke about. And then when we do take something out of service, we're doing it at the right time and realizing the cost savings around there. And um, Dallas is a person that I've touted as somebody who can make the CMDB exciting and fun. And he may be the first to do that. And uh, as it's uh, <laughs> never really been up on the forefront of, you know, customer experience or flash and sizzle, but uh, maybe Dallas could best describe how we utilize the power of discovery and the CMDB to realize cost savings for our clients. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. I think the most important thing to realize with the CMDB is what you give within it is a single source of truth for all your configuration items. And having that single source of truth does allow an organization to go and look at that repository and make decisions to, you know, uh, verify or check to see if they are redundant, to see if there's other applications that are out of date. Um, having a, a single location for all your information, all your configuration items does make it super simple because then you're not spending time looking for, you know, the background information contained about this, this program, this application. And it allows you to go to that, that single source of truth and be able to do your evaluation based upon it. And like Christopher talked about, you know, that with discovery, finding the configuration items and populating your CMDB, the interesting thing is, you know, with discovery and some other applications that are there, uh, the service mapping specifically, it shows you the issues that if you decide, you know, or it gives you the process to be able to make that decision on whether something is truly redundant, because it gives you a upstream and downstream and horizontal view of how that application is going to affect additional programs uh, just due to the relationships that exist there. Th thanks so much, uh, Chris and uh, Dallas. Uh, definitely a foundational component. Uh, definitely drives very tangible uh, savings as we're looking at those business applications, we're looking at those business services, uh, we're running discovery, we're understanding all the underlying components. We can immediately find redundant or even unused servers, unused infrastructure. Uh, so great ways to identify those budget saving opportunities as well as in that combined uh, benefit of rationalizing your applications and the underlying software and infrastructure. So thank you so much for uh, sharing uh, the examples there. Uh, the next area here, and this kind of builds upon at portfolio management, but in and of itself, it can also really provide a significant uh, savings to organizations. So when you think about it from a software asset management perspective, uh, we all have a software in our organizations that we, that we use to run our business. And we uh, maintain that software so that we continue to provide those business processes those business capabilities, but we might actually uh, be over uh, paying for that software because of the overall utilization uh, of employees actually using the software. And so software asset management is all about uh, letting you understand and know uh, what the usage is uh, of all the software entitlements that you've purchased, identify opportunities where you can right size uh, those uh, support renewals as an example based upon usage or looking at areas where uh, individuals really aren't using the system and confirming and seeing whether or not they actually need that and then redeploying uh, those licenses to a new business unit that's coming on board that needs access uh, to those capabilities, thereby avoiding additional purchases uh, from a software perspective. So this area here of software asset management is another very tangible area where you can drive uh, savings. So we see significant opportunities here for reducing your maintenance uh, costs uh, based upon understanding that utilization. Next here, uh, kind of the same type of scenario here, but it's really looking at your contracts and looking at uh, that actual consumption uh, so we can uh, drive additional savings there. And then uh, this third one here is kind of like a cost avoidance, but it's also uh, saving a significant time and effort when it comes to compliance and auditing. We see many organizations uh, with some of the leading software uh, vendors, they'll come in and, and require a couple different audits throughout the year. 
So that's going to require a team to be pulled off of their their day to day job and pull together information to support uh, compliance versus having it automated and just part of day to day activities on the platform. So reducing that time and effort at the same time being able to avoid and reduce the risks and costs with having to uh, be out of compliance. So some really tangible uh, budget savings opportunities. So you'll notice here in, in some of the Gartner reports that uh, organizations can save up to 30% of software costs uh, in their first year when it comes to uh, software asset ma management. So we've seen that consistently with organizations. And so we feel like it's uh, definitely an opportunity uh, for you and your organization as well, uh, depending upon where you are in the uh, software asset management uh, maturity model and what solutions you're using today. So some customer examples here, when you look at software asset management, kind of focused in the areas that we've been mentioning here in terms of driving uh, overall savings. So you can see here uh, now being able to really mitigate that uh, compliance risk uh, and being able to save uh, license trip costs, being able to save any of those type of uh, audit findings. Uh, so an opportunity to really kind of save uh, millions here uh, from this healthcare organization. Next, looking at how to optimize your software spend and understanding uh, kind of the rationalizing of your applications kind of gives you that compound effect. And so being able to save here, looking at this example of $8 million when it comes to uh, software cost savings. So we can also then look at the efficiencies related to preparing for audits. Uh, so being able to have the out of the box reports, being able to uh, view and, and see uh, how the licenses are being utilized uh, from a usage perspective, and eliminate weeks of time and effort uh, preparing for audits. So significant uh, savings and, and a tangible uh, budget that you can now reclaim and use in the organization. So before we move on and next, uh, Chris, uh, I'll turn it back over to you. I'm sure there's some significant uh, benefits here you guys have experienced uh, with your customers around software asset management. Um, John, we have, and, it, and it's really in the same light, taking these same examples. Uh, big ones for us are that licensing true up cost. Uh, many times organizations, uh, there's still, you know, kingdoms, fiefdoms, organizations that do self-help and they deploy software within the organization to help themselves out, not realizing that in the, in the division right next to them, they're utilizing a similar software that does the same thing. And it, we, we end up with a lot of redundancy. And the ability for ServiceNow to discover most every uh, software element out there and give dynamic data into where you're at it and at what you're utilizing. Um, and, I, you know, at the end of the day, ServiceNow uses software true up automation uh, to make sure that either the customer is paying for everything they're using or um, um, if there's a significant uh, decrease in the number of users to to true up the, um, the the licensing going forward so that the customer is getting the most value out of it. And um, I don't know if you have anything to add on this particular cost saving model, but dynamic software and software contract information is a a huge area um, for clients to discover and uh, make changes in to, to save budget and hopefully apply to things like innovation or um, resources. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to add something real quick, John. Um, the, one of the specific examples that I can think of was a client didn't realize they had the uh, usage of a software system that they had, knowing that they only had a certain amount of entitlements available for that software. And that was obviously done through the discovery pop. Uh, process and the population of the CMDB and it really you know through that process really kind of opened their eyes to you know oh, it does this we they, they didn't even have an idea and they really weren't tracking the software entitlements and the usage of said software to the level that they probably should have been and the discovery tool and the software asset management tool helped in that realm Thank you so much, uh, uh, Chris and, and and Dallas. Definitely a very tangible area to save uh, millions uh, within the organization. 
Very again, that's based upon what your current spend is uh, from a software. So next I want to move over to project portfolio management. When we think about the previous uh, budget funding opportunities, right? those are uh, potential initiatives that you might want to identify in the organization. And so that's where it kind of can comes together here in terms of project portfolio management. We can start then looking at uh, what are those initiatives? What are the associated benefits and value of investing in, uh, you know, doing discovery, uh, doing app portfolio management, uh, applying end-to-end -end service management workflows. Um, and so really this project portfolio management capabilities uh, allows us to start looking at which areas should we actually invest in? How does it align to our strategy? What's the benefit we are going to achieve? And so uh, a very critical piece here for organizations, especially in these type of uh, challenging times. We typically see uh, a large increase of organizations investing in project portfolio management systems uh, during challenging times uh, because we know that uh, all the dollars are being more closely uh, looked at and you're trying to really identify where are we spending our, our money. Um, but our focus today is, yes, you would spend some money to actually do that project, but you're going to get significant savings, which you can then shift uh, for more value-added initiatives. So some of the, the tangible areas that we see for funding uh, opportunities here uh, for uh, PPM, number one, eliminate unnecessary in-flight projects. It's an area we see a lot of organizations they, they don't do. Uh, a lot of organizations, they say yes to all of the, uh, the project demands coming in, and they try to do those, and then they try to focus on the top priority ones or the ones that uh, are creating the, the most noise in the organization. But the power of, of, of stopping those in-flight projects, just like with us personally as we're managing our own uh, personal uh, investment strategy, uh, you know, as things start to, to go down in the market or we have uh, various uh, – investments that are going uh, south, typically we stop, uh, we would sell those and then we invest in something else. So applying that same type of methodology here, uh, applying some, some governance process so that uh, we don't continue to roll out uh, in dining experience uh, type of solutions when everything's now moving towards on dining delivery uh, uh, as an example. Next is really focusing in on and understanding the value opportunities with the different initiatives, whether it be app portfolio management or discovery or whether it be for software asset management, looking at those initiatives are going to be a self-funding that's going to generate that budget savings uh, so that we can actually implement, uh, drive additional savings to focus on additional strategic initiatives. And then ways to look at reducing your uh, administrative burdens. So project management and an overall project portfolio management from a investment perspective, it does require administrative effort to manage and maintain that. Um, and so we need to do that in the most efficient uh, way possible. And so ServiceNow provides uh, some ability to do that through uh, workflow automation, through analytics reporting, uh, through status reporting uh, that can be uh, more automated than what you're using today. So these are some of the, the uh, opportunities we see in terms of driving tangible benefits here around managing your project portfolio and your investment portfolio. So here's a, an example of a financial services organization. And here being able to get that visibility into all of those requests coming in, being able to actually uh, say no or allow the business to say no when they have that visibility of all the requests coming in for their department. Identifying opportunities to eliminate uh, multiple tools uh, based upon their current inventory, driving efficiency, driving uh, the opportunity to uh, reduce uh, the overall administration efforts of, say, creating business cases or, or managing and reporting uh, against your projects, because that's also important to make sure that we're protecting uh, those investments, whether they be self-funding or not. Uh, another example here from a professional services organization, uh, and we see this a lot by getting that visibility and transparency, uh, that helps drive uh, you know, stopping certain initiatives. A lot of times if we get the visibility to the right executive in the organization, they can recognize that that initiative is no longer going to be effective six months from now, nine months from now. So maybe we should just stop that investment, save that, uh, you know, $500,000, that a million dollars that we plan on spending over the next six or nine months 
And now let's free up those funds to invest in uh, a value generating or self-funding uh, initiative. So that power of visibility is really key. And we've found that many times with organizations, uh, as I've done a lot of large IT transformation, it's definitely an area where you can look at shifting or saving uh, 25% of, say, your strategic investment uh, funds that you have budgeted for for the year. Uh, next here, just as an example, when we look at uh, speed and we look at uh, being able to drive uh, efficiencies, as we know with projects, right, if we can get that solution or that capability uh, set up quicker, we can start receiving the benefit for increased online orders, as an example, or in increased number of students uh, actually attending online courses. That's going to drive more revenue, so it's important to make sure we streamline that process. So here's an example, and I've actually uh, spoken with Ronnie a few times and how they are using Agile and SAFE in different parts of their organization to really uh, streamline uh, that delivery process. They also use project portfolio management uh, to look at that visibility uh, and also be able to support that hybrid project management. So at, at her level, the PMO, they use the standard project portfolio management capabilities to determine where to invest and where to uh, fund and provide that type of reporting, but then allowing the teams to go off and use their uh, methodology of choice, uh, such as Agile or SAFE, uh, to increase that uh, overall uh, time to market. So here at the end, uh, we wanted to kind of close. Uh, the, the question is, where are the biggest budget funding opportunities in your organization? So based upon our high-level overview today, kind of highlighting areas where customers uh, receive value and showing you some of those uh, tangible outcomes. Where are the opportunities for your organization? So think about targeting those workflows, uh, understanding what the value might be. You can add that into your business case. Um, and so we've kind of highlighted multiple different areas here around customer service management, HR service management, and service delivery, app portfolio management, underlying components there with discovery in the CMDB, uh, strategic project portfolio management, how are we managing those investments, as well as software asset management. So many opportunities here to uh, really generate some self-funding and uh, find some budget available to focus on some of your uh, current imperatives. So in terms of ways that we can uh, work together here, um, some of your potential next steps is scheduling a session with Results Positive CRI here to uh, schedule uh, a value discovery workshop. Um, also uh, an opportunity to look at it at value discovery engagement. Uh, so that's uh, an opportunity for you. Uh, schedule your service now uh, business value assessment. Um, so both uh, CRI and, and Results Positive we partner with uh, ServiceNow. They have a business value assessment tool, and uh, so that way you can get some tangible uh, results that you can use uh, to the uh, the board to actually get funding and approval. Here again, right, we're focusing on self-generating, value-generating uh, opportunities, so it should be an opportunity to easily uh, get the investment uh, for these type of initiatives. Also, uh, you can schedule an implementation here with uh, CRI and, and results positive. Uh, to help uh, achieve those uh, buzz budget savings. So in summary here, uh, before we can open it up here for questions, uh, it's an opportunity to really uh, schedule that discovery workshop. So reach out to Chris, to Dallas, or myself, and we can assist in these different areas uh, to identify uh, the uh, budget saving opportunities with your organization, and what that roadmap look like, what's those quick wins, the uh, low hanging fruit that we can assist with, uh, so uh, some great opportunities here, and we'd love to have a, an opportunity to uh, discuss uh, some of the uh, opportunities and challenges that uh, you're facing today. Um, next, after that, feel free to attend some of our upcoming sessions where we're actually going to show the value maps. We're going to take it to the next level below today and actually start showing you the value map, how you can tie strategic objectives to initiatives to the actual value, as well as provide you with an overview uh, some of these uh, solutions in upcoming uh, sessions. So that'll be tied here to our uh, Finding Budget Savings webinar series. But Chris and Dallas, anything else you'd like to highlight in terms of a next step of scheduling a discovery workshop or uh, what you guys would like to offer in terms of next steps? I think you said it all, John. Um, being able to get together, some of the examples that we talked about, we went through the process of 
um, not only accelerating customer value, but actually showing what kind of kind of productivity gains that our customers would realize. Attaching numbers to that to provide business value. And you mentioned low hanging fruit. We like to go after those opportunities that we identify together with our clients to take something down quickly to to realize some budget savings, to realize some ROI quickly, and then build on that success. We like it, uh, liken it to the uh, the the gray uh, flat piece of Lego that's the platform, and then we like to put Legos on top of it that continue to increase value um, and um, along the way. And we like to have those discussions. Uh, one of the challenges we find today, John, is time. Is, is somebody available to go through that process? Um, and once we are, um, th the results are tremendous. And then it also helps us in devising that plan, the priorities which we want to take down, those types of things. Great. Thanks so much, Chris. Appreciate that. Uh, Dallison, do you have any final comments here before we open up and see if we have any questions? Sure. Um, just to add to what Christopher said and what you said, John, that, you know, basically that great Lego is that foundation. You know, I think the purpose of this today was to give everybody that is a participant of uh, that foundation, give them something to start on and build upon. So to further build upon it, obviously, it, it makes sense to tie it back to your organization to use numbers and and basically kind of put the the rubber to the road at that point and and take forth on your you know service now journey on how it's going to make your organization more efficient and realize where your organization specifically can gain these cost savings get rid of these redundancies uh, gain more insight into the software that exists across their the organization so you know it, it's it's worth it to take that next step and obviously, uh, results positive and CRI is, you know, here to help in that journey. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Chris and Dallas. Appreciate you co-hosting our webinar today. Thanks so much for your insights. I'm sure customers have found those to be very valuable. Uh, as you've all mentioned, uh, we have a, a strong partnership here and look forward to uh, bringing our capabilities to bear for customers uh, to provide them with these value-generating opportunities.